Everybody rap about the masterpiece gold <laughs> ceilings, but it didn't work out for me in the end. When it's time to sell, like, how much you gonna give me for these gold ceilings? Nah, that was a mistake. So now I don't do nothing when I go into the house. I'm just gonna paint it, get it right, ready. They like, this your house, P? I thought, where the gold ceilings at? No, that was 20 years ago. Master P, this is so exciting. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. So you've got a new movie. It's been a long time coming because I remember the original. Yes. I got the hookup. The, I got the hookup too. Why bring it back? I feel like it's just time. Dealing with the internet, taking the social media stars, putting them in movies with Hollywood stars. This is a new way to market a movie. Hollywood is going to change the way they make films behind this movie because we took 200 million followers, mm -hmm. you know, with the stars that we have. This is the next way to market films. You know, they normally spend millions and millions of dollars to market, but we could touch 200 million people at the push of a button. Also taking a cast of that magnitude that's willing to go out and market and promote it. I mean, we up for the Guinness Book of Records for 126 actors and actresses with speaking roles. Wow. Never been done. You always like to have a lot of people around. Yeah, it's you know a what? A song, a movie. Yes, I mean, you know what? This is me taking what I did in music in the 90s and taking it to the movie world and saying, you know what, let's take over. Because I tell people all the time as, as a minority, whether it's African Americans and Latinos, we only own 5% of the movie business. 5%. We have no ownership in this. So I feel like it's time for the underdogs to take over. At least get a little piece of the pie, add some diversity. Nobody could make these type of movies like us, so we should own them. It has to start with owning property, owning your business. This is a movement, it's not just a movie. This is a real movement. I mean, you certainly did that for the music industry. You yeah. completely disrupted it. I mean, yeah. take us back to 1996. You famously signed a music distribution deal with yeah. Priority Records, uh, where No Limit Records yeah. takes the 100% ownership of the master recordings, and yeah. then you have this famous 85%, 15% deal. How did you get that deal? Well, you know what? It's called putting skin in the game, putting your own money up first, being your own boss. At that time, I needed $200,000 to get a, a distribution deal for the pay for the marketing. I was selling CDs out the trunk of my car. I started saving my money up. And then we got time to get the distribution deal. Then that's how I got the power. I put up my own marketing money. Anybody that want to be in business need to realize you need to be committed if you want to be an entrepreneur. And I was committed back then to put up that type of money, that was that was a lot of money. Taylor Swift was recently in the headlines over her catalog, yeah. um, you know, changing hands. And I, I guess I was just surprised that somebody of her caliber had a deal like that where she didn't own everything yeah. already. I mean, what advice do you have to an artist like Taylor Swift or other artists? Well, I think that artists, athletes, entertainers, you need to know your business. Let me learn economics, let me learn banking, let me learn my business. Am I committed to not just the, the artistry side of it, but the business side? It's like a basketball player. Basketball, a lot of basketball players tell me, basketball is my life. That's my business. I'm like, no, you can't play basketball forever. So you need to learn something else. I played in the NBA. Mm -hmm. It's only two hours out the day. What do you do with the rest if you got 24 hours in a day? The mother 22 hours, what do you do? You know, some people like to play busy. Real entrepreneurs and people that understand business, they're, they're committed to making those sacrifices, knowing that you have to juggle different things, unless you just want to be talent. And I tell people all the time, product outweighs talent. I think people know you as, yeah. you know, first uh, a rapper, an yeah. actor, you've been a basketball player, yeah. a wrestler. Yeah. Uh, you've had a, a lot of different areas that you've worked in. How do you describe yourself? Well, I'm going to change the rap part. I think we got to get over that. I, I consider myself an entrepreneur, a businessman, a most important philanthropist. I've been giving back for over 21 years. I love the next generation. I'm committed to helping inner city kids and the elderly. I would say entrepreneur and philanthropist. That, that, that's how I would describe myself. 
I love working because I feel like the more I make, the more I can give. If I don't make money, I can't do the other part I love, which is a philanthropist. I can't give. I want to confirm that yeah. you have either uh, been invested or are invested in um, all of these things. A travel agency? Yeah. True. A Foot Locker retail outlet? True. Over 100 real estate properties? I haven't counted, so maybe close. Toy making? Yes. What toys? The Master P doll. You, but so you didn't like sign no, that off to somebody no, else? No. You I, did it. I made that, went to China, purchased that myself, put it in stores. That's what I'm saying, you have to know your business. Telecommunications. Yes, I got the hookup. Yep, okay. How live you hear me, you know? <laughs> the phones, that's where the movie came from. Okay. People don't realize the movie come from the hookup on the phones. A jewelry line. You think I'd be wearing this if I didn't have a jewelry line? Fast food franchise? Yes. And a gas station? Yes. All of these? Yeah. I mean, what inspires you See, to do all of that? When you come from poverty, I didn't get a bed till I was 19, till I went to college. I lived in a three bedroom project with 16 people. So I lived with my grandparents. And even when I was in the ghetto, I was saying that my mindset was different. I, I live in a mansion. I've always, that little kid thinking I'm in a mansion, even though I was in poverty. And I, I never said I was broke. I've always said the money is in the mill, it's coming. Just the power of words. And I named myself Master P because I wanted to master whatever I do. And so I feel like diversity, when, when you start making money, you need to verse because some of those things was down, but some of those things went up. That's what kept me going. And by me being from New Orleans, uh, the hurricane town, everything could get washed away tomorrow. Then what are you going to do? So my grandmother always taught me, don't put all your eggs in one basket. But you have to stay focused mm -hmm. and you have to stay committed. Everything that you talked about is stuff that I could be committed to. I keep it all in-house giving opportunities and jobs. Everything kind of tie into each other. What about the stock market? Do you... I, I, don't, I don't gamble. You think the stock market's gambling? Do it you... is. I know a lot of guys that, at the end of the day, it took them out. I respect it, but it's not something that I know. Mm -hmm. So when you come from poverty, you realize that um, you got to do what you know. You got to do what you love. It's help you in business. You don't work for money. When you're in the stock market, you're, you're trying to make some money or do this for the money. I like to do what I love. Are there CEOs out there that you admire? No, I, I admire a lot of them, to be honest with you. The guy that's running Amazon Jeff is, in, is incredible. I feel like he took a part of something that can't be duplicated. You know, they came from nowhere. Nobody's seen that coming. And those are the type of things that I like to do. I mean, you took um, $10,000 yes. that you inherited. Yes. I mean, how much do you think you've turned that into? I don't know, because to be honest with you, like I told you, I don't work for money. I work harder because I want to help more people. So I have a, I'm on a different journey now just to build a generational wealth and to prepare my kids for success. Uh, you wrote a book. Guaranteed yeah. success. Guaranteed success when you never give up. It's like a workbook. It right? is. I mean, it's hard to be a guaranteed success, yeah, but well, I guess you're saying it's possible. Not giving up on your race. A lot of people give up. They, they run a short distance, but life is a marathon. When you about to give up, like Dr. Seuss, they was gonna throw his books back in the garbage can and his friends say, no, these worth something. You gotta find that person that's gonna push you. You know, instead of running with people that's just running with you. If you want to be successful, you have to find somebody that's going to push you all the way over the finish line. Who pushes you? You know what, to be honest with you, people in the community, the, the people that showed me love, tell me you could make it, you could do it. Because a lot of people don't want to see you make it. It's a lot of hating when it comes down to Nobody want to see you get across that finish line before them. And you got to stay prayed up. And I think that anybody that want to be successful, they have to know 
you know, your determination will get you to your destination. And that's real for me. I had to change a lot of things, had to cut a lot of people off to get to where I wanted to go at. And you're not done yet. I'm not what done. What is the next thing is? The next thing is uh, taking over this film industry, saying that we're going to be able to make those multi-million dollar movies soon. It's like I started in the music and I started small, started with the ice cream man and built my way up to get to the last dime. And same thing I'm doing now. I got the hookup too. It's only the beginning for where Genius Minds films will be going. Do you worry about all this consolidation in Hollywood? I mean, Disney getting Fox, like, like how what, much Netflix is spending and scaring everybody. That's why we got to create some more avenues. And that's what we're about thinking outside of the box. Think about it. All those companies come from somebody with a dream, somebody believing, somebody thinking outside the box. Time for the speed round now. Are you a saver or spender? Saver. An impulse buyer or agonizer? Impulse. Cash or credit? Credit. What was your worst job? I worked at Remco. I was the repo man for the furniture store. Really? Yeah. That's a terrible job. I know, that's why I quit. What was your <laughs> best job? My best job was working for No Limit Records, turning that into my own store, owning my own store in the Bay, being my own boss. So I learned the business from the ground up. Everything about music, marketing, I learned it right there in that store. So that was my best job. What did you do with your first grown-up paycheck? I brought some for my grandmother. Even when I made it, I made sure I went and brought her a house before I brought anything. And finally, for someone who has had a successful career in so many yes. different industries, yes. what's your best advice to people out there in the working world, you know, um, trying, trying to make it, trying to do a good job? I tell people, if you get in a business, you need to know everything about your business. You need to know what the janitor's doing. You need to know what the guy who's cooking the burgers doing, if that's what you're in. You need to know what the meal room is doing. You need to know everything about your business to be successful. Stay committed. So whatever you do and love it. And everything else will fall in place because you want to be happy with whatever you do. Master P, it's so yeah. nice to meet you. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing all of Thank this. Thank you.